the national education policy which has become the most interesting and uh, challenging area whatever required changes needs to be brought in this national education policy the evaluation system has to change so the continuous comprehensive evaluation can happen by making use of the technology looking at the volume and the numbers now we are trying to integrate all the best practices in our government uh, institution across even the remote place the sub center primary health center or the community health center taluk hospital district hospital needs to be connected and we are trying to establish in the state of karnataka to ensure that the best possible health care should be available in any part of the state we have to give them the autonomy and the freedom which was not there probably and many more initiatives have been taken up and consistently nothing has stopped us the covid or anything our bangalore tech summit has been going on we have established many clusters across the state of karnataka we have digital economy mission offices across the state and we have been working very closely and starting many of the incubators having latest r and d plop policies startup policies and uh, beyond bangalore policy it new it policy exclusive interview series with the IT State Ministries of India. It is a recorded session and will be uploaded on our website that is cionews.co.in and our CIO News LinkedIn handle. It gives me an immense pleasure in introducing my guest for today. He is Dr. C. N. Ashwin Narayan, Honorable Minister of Science and Technology of Karnataka. Dr. C. N. Ashwin Narayan is an Indian politician and the 10th Deputy Chief Minister of Karnataka and the current Minister of Higher Education, Information Technology, Biotechnology, Science and Technology, Skill Development, Entrepreneurship and Livelihood in the Government of Karnataka. Uh, Ms. Narayan is he is also a member of Karnataka Legislative Assembly, representing BJP from Maleshwaram constituency, Bangalore, Karnataka, a multifaceted personality and a firm believer of technology. Dr. Ashwin Narayan Tien is an educationist, healthcare entrepreneur, and philanthropist. Um, so it's an absolute pleasure to have you today. Thank you so much, Sony. It's an honor and uh... Really, I was looking forward to interact with you and talk about the national education policy, which has become the most interesting and uh, uh, challenging area. With uh, people have been looking forward uh, to get an opportunity to bring in the changes in the education, the field of education, so that it is going to transform the entire education, thereby transforming the lives of all the youngsters, students, and the society and the country. So it's a great opportunity to be part of this transformation. So my first question is, um, in fact, a, not a question. I would like to congratulate uh, to you and to the entire state for having this new national education program and being the first state to have a national education program in India. So, uh, so my question is around that. If you can throw some light on uh, the national education program and uh, you know what what are were the issues to deploy them, uh, it would be great. Uh, basically, now in the new national education policy, which has been brought out after thirty four years, uh, a number of things have been you know uh, changed. Are been amended. Are in been uh, the new policy facilitates the the real changes. What is required for the twenty first century and to the present time with the changing scenario of the emerging technologies and the changing scenario in the context of the globalization and privatization. The quality of education cannot be second to none. So, if anything has to get set right in the society or the country, it can happen through education only. It starts with education, the as and when, with the quantitative education, qualitative education needs to be given a lot of emphasis. 
So with regard to the qualitative education, it has to be given to our youngsters. There are a lot of rigidity. The rigidity has to be removed. The flexibility has to be brought in. And the gap, whatever gap was existing in the present system, needs to be effectively addressed. For that, whatever required changes needs to be brought in, has been brought in in this national education policy. For example, the formal education in the children, early uh, children uh, education is to start from the age of six. Okay. Now it is going to start from the age of three. It's a big change uh, because 85% of the brain development happens in the age between the three to six. It's a very important age. How much you stimulate, that is so much of benefit will be the, the stimulation or the learning provided in this age can make a huge impact and a huge difference. So definitely it is going to make an, a huge impact. A small addition is going to take a major difference and it will be really challenging to bring in this kind of integration at the basic level. And more so with regard to the earlier, it was 12 years of education. Now it is getting into 15 years of education. And in this education, a uh, lot of, you know, uh, everything is to be done in a hard separations when it is to be, you know, bringing together of science or uh, commerce, science, arts, there is to be hard separation. Even in the curricular and extracurricular, when it is to be sports and other social activity, cultural activity, any socially impactful activity, all this is to be separately kept. Now this all become a part of the learning. Now vocational also has been integrated with the academic. And this kind of flexibility in the learning and bringing technology as a core and addressing the, the dropout also in the education system, improving the quality of education and ensuring the gross enrollment ratio by 2040, it should be 100%. It should become 100%. So that's a great target which has been set in. So we are working in this direction. In higher education, uh, there was to be, as I rightly Marley pointed out, the art separation, we're trying to remove the art separation, the multidisciplinary concept, interdisciplinary concept, and with regard to the multi-entry and multi-exit system has been brought in, and collaboration and partnership with uh, all the institutions so that whatever limitations are there in the education system will be overcome by collaborating and partnering with one of the best of the best institution or the industry, uh, thereby ensuring that the children will get the best education without any limitation to bring the best out of the student. So like this, many uh, best aspects are there in this uh, national education policy, which is really a forward looking policy. And the, the complete uh, uh, revising and revamping of the system along with the governance, and administration also. So this is going to give a lot of freedom and in the present affiliating system, we are trying to get away with the affiliating system. Within next 15 years, we want to, uh, we are having a vision of you know, stopping the entire affiliation system and ensure that the minimum should be degree awarding autonomous institution. So in this way, uh, the whatever learning is to happen in isolation, we are trying to end that isolation now networking with all possible institution and bringing together all possible players together in the interest of the students. So wonderful insights and uh, really looking forward to this one. It's a great initiative. Um, so my follow-up question on that is around the COVID times. Uh, you know, this whole COVID situation that we are in through the last two years, I wanted to get your thoughts on, you know, uh, and the response that you've heard from the teachers and students on the digital education, and how are you planning to have, uh, you know, transform the whole education industry? Uh, and do you look, look forward to transforming it to completely digital, or what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, definitely, particularly in the, the backdrop of the COVID-19, mm -hmm. the hybrid uh, has come in place. The hybrid learning has come in the place. The offline and the online integration is in happening. And earlier also, it is earlier also even before COVID, the hybrid learning was there, not in this scale. It was there in a very uh, small proportion. Now, since the 
the situation is very demanding, particularly in the COVID-19. It's been very challenging and demanding. Online education and digitalization of the education has become the way forward. Now, entire society or the entire system is transforming from the physical to virtual. But anyhow, in education, it cannot become completely virtual. It's a collaboration between the offline and the online. Sure. Particularly in this direction, probably I am very proud and I can tell confidently in the state of Karnataka, we initiated a lot of measures even before the COVID uh, could start, we thought of, of the comprehensive learning management system, uh, internet-enabled smart classrooms, providing device to the students, so that uh, anytime, anywhere learning can be promoted. Right. And in this direction, the content, the assessment, analytics, everything has been provided. Right. We are going to assess whatever the, the aim of the national education policy to have a formative assessment. See, it all starts with an assessment. If the assessment system only doesn't change, it is top to bottom uh, kind of changes. The evaluation system has to change so the continuous comprehensive evaluation can happen by making use of the technology, looking at the volume and the numbers. Uh, so this is all very beneficial and even we have brought in another technology platform also, Unified University College Management System, thereby we do have 10 modules is going to comprehensively cover every aspect. By thereby doing all these things, we are ensuring that the government institution, particularly I can tell you, uh, in the national education policy, the government institution are going to benefit immensely. Because in the private education, already they had started the pre-primary education from the age of three. Itself. But in the government, that was not happening. Yeah. When it comes to the public university, when it comes to the government institution, there were a lot of you know uh, setbacks, particularly incorporating, making the technology as a core area yeah. to simplify and get the best of the uh, best uh, results or the impact uh, through the adaption of the technologies. Somewhere we were lagging. Now integration of the back to back, whatever we do, now we are trying to integrate all the best practices in our government uh, institution, right. thereby ensuring that the benchmarking, benchmarking. Uh, in the quality, in the terms of quality of education, it should be from the government institution, and thereby uh, ensuring the the bigger presence of the government also and competent. Ultimately, private or government, it should be the quality should be the main motto. So we are completely adapting the technology to ensure, enforce, and uh, uh, promote the quality of education to be promoted by integration of technology. Many good things we have been done in state of country. Wonderful. But awesome. I think that is great. Uh, so my next question is around the healthcare industry. Uh, what initiatives do you plan to take to transform the healthcare industry into a digital health industry? I mean, what are the challenges that you faced? Uh, something yeah, definitely. The e-office, uh, we were the first people in the higher education department, ITBT, to start off with the e-office, complete adoption, 100% we did it. Uh, in the government, uh, already that, that platform was existing with regard to the e-office and e-governance, it was existing. But in our department, we ensured that it was implemented in total. And we have done it. Now we are, we are ex expecting the, all the public university to follow in line and uh, adopt the same in the colleges and as well as in the university, it should be 100%. So thereby, uh, the, there will not be any delay. The accountability and the transparency can be promoted much more in a big way uh, to bring in uh, a very good uh, uh, administration and facilitating all the better things to happen in a very fast manner. And along with the e-office, uh, the unified university college management system is something amazing, which is going to make a huge difference in all the aspects, let it be with regard to the student performance, administration, digital evaluation, services, affiliation, all possible services will be covered here. All possible services, it will be really effective. And already we have done it. Whatever I'm telling you, it is not that it is on the paper. Whatever I'm mentioning so far, the comprehensive learning management system, probably the content what we have developed for our uh, comprehensive LMS, will be surprised we do already have a content of 350,000 classes, which has been already the content developed with the PPT, video, audio, 
and all the content of highest standards contents already been developed and already among the 8000 classrooms we have uh, we are having now 2500 smart classrooms right. and we have provided 3 lakh more than 3 lakh devices have been provided this year again we are going to provide more than 2 lakh devices to the students thereby not, nothing is working in isolation the complete digital education is in place mm -hmm. for the complete digital education. and to have ultimately anywhere anytime uh, uh, education will be provided and the content and the assessment will happen very effectively great uh, i think it's just great to see and learn how we digitally transforming the state and our nation in india um, so my next question is, uh, you know, what strategy should be in place to protect the digital data of the government, of our healthcare industry, education industry, and all the other industries, in fact, uh, in your state from the cyber attacks that we've seen and faced in these times? So, those are my top Definitely, now digital healthcare is now the way forward because. Uh, across even the remote place, the sub center, primary health center, or the community health center, taluk hospital, district hospital needs to be connected. The complete loop is has to be in place uh, to ensure that uh, whatever required uh, medical services, doctor consultation services, and uh, with regard to the availability of the data, investigation, vital parameters being taken up in the respective places should be available. Uh, for the evaluation or the for the consultation of the doctor to capture all those data digitalization in sub center level or the phcs and taluk hospital is very much essential so in this direction we are trying to completely digitalize the infrastructure for capturing of the data in, for the diagnostic services and all possible things to effectively provide and as well as for the management even when the resource person is not available, the remote facility can make a huge difference with regard right. to the ICU facility or the medical services. All possible services can be provided to the place where they are living instead of making them move around, go around, uh, keeping in a lot of anxiety and fear. Yeah. Instead of there in their respective places with all the confidence, without any fear, the best possible medical care can be provided to them. This is the vision of our honorable prime minister in this direction we are trying to establish in the state of Karnataka to ensure that the best possible health care should be available in any part of the state, thereby giving a lot of confidence to people whoever is living in a remote place, they don't, they don't have to worry about the health care. Great. Um, I think it's just great to see and learn how we digitally transforming the state and our nation in India. Um, so my next question is, uh, you know, what strategy should be in place to protect the digital data of the government, of our healthcare industry, education industry, and all the other industries, in fact, uh, in your state from the cyber attacks that we've seen and faced in these times? So those are my top that. Yeah, particularly in the cyberspace, the cyber security and the cyber laws needs to be strengthened in this direction where the government has been prioritizing these challenges there across the world. Yeah. But we need to strengthen and enforce. And with regard to the data security, anonymity will be taken care and the data will not be shared with anybody because it is very confidential. We can't afford to do this. Yeah. The confidence and the protection of the data has to be addressed very strongly when we are very uh, much careful and we are aware of this sensitivity definitely will not let it go but anyhow this big data or the data utilization needs to be done effectively in the better way for the for the, with the anonymity without sharing any personal details we can work and ensure uh, this will all be done in the interest of people not for any gain it is not for any gain it's a great uh, wonderful insights uh, so any last, um, you know, best practices, any, uh, you know, uh, pointers that you would like to share with our viewers uh, out there? So anything that you would want to put it across uh, would be great to hear. The most important uh, since the formation of our government in the state of the Karnataka in the past two years in this tenure, 
we have been doing a lot of reforms in all the areas now to talk about my own departments particularly now uh, the national education policy it's going to really change the transform the entire country what we are looking for in a new india the new india can happen only through national education policy this is a solution which all of us have been looking forward to allow us to do uh, things that is particularly to provide the right quality education framework has to be very flexible and it should facilitate what are good things for the each of the institution to do we had to give them the autonomy and the freedom which was not there and it was earlier it was in a pre prescribed and a rigid and a rigid framework there was not much scope for any of the institution to uh, scale up the education system or provide a quality education thereby it was leading to a lot of challenges and uh, institution of excellence we had very limited institution in the next 25 years probably we'll be having n number of institution of excellence uh, thereby giving a right opportunity to, to the youngsters to get a right quality education and with a lot of forward looking relevant with dealing with the emerging and the relevant uh, technologies and building a better future for them through that it is a better future for the entire society and we can compete with the best of the best countries who are the most advanced countries because whatever we are doing it is not in isolation we are totally in the globalization and the privatization right. scenario right. so we can't be second to none the main mission of the nep is to have the best education second to none by 2040 right so this has to be achieved this by doing this probably uh, will be in the top of the world and uh, will be in a better good place better place to take our country forward and to take care of the interests of all the and then that by group people so we need to start and we need to work forward and uh, national education policy is very good policy and in with regard to the itbt one interesting uh, uh, policy we have brought out karnataka digital economy mission the economy mission is part of its kind in the entire country probably in the world having the private and government in under one organization where 51% of the share is given to the nascom nascom yeah and uh, have been part of that board 51% right. share has been given and there our finance secretary industry secretary it secretary skill secretary all of them will be part of that board and the chairman of the board will be surprised is a an ascom man who is the chairing the board where the policies of the entire state will be designed and to facilitate and they have a targeted investment targeted promotion and addressing the concern of all the industry players thereby they don't have to wait anywhere else they are now part of the government they work closely this is part of the government where else can we see this kind of arrangement as yeah. uh, organization you can't see el- nowhere else such a kind of organization been hello been been built to facilitate a, a bigger collaboration our honorable prime minister of mission of having a 5 trillion economy 5 trillion us dollars yeah. in that 1 trillion us dollars will be digital economy and we at present also we have a market share of more than 30 to 35% right at present now we do have 54 billion us dollar if it is 1 trillion it will uh, it has to increase to the 350 billion us dollar right. imagine the kind of uh, scaling which we need to do so in the direction yeah. Yeah. we are getting up and preparing to have our lion share yeah. probably and many more initiatives have been taken up and consistently nothing has stopped us the covid or anything mm-hmm. our bangalore tech summit has been going on we have established many clusters across the state of karnataka we have digital economy mission offices across the state and we have been working very closely and starting many of the incubators having latest r and d plop policies startup policies and uh, beyond bangalore policy it new it policy right. we have come up beyond with the esdm policy is also the best in the country Right. like this we have been consistently working very closely with the industry uh, to ensure that the state of karnataka is the best place to do business and for the strengthening of the country and to be the best destination in the entire world right it's uh, bangalore being actually the silicon valley of uh, the world right so you want to be the world <laughs> so one last question uh so we seen bangalore as uh, as a silicon valley 
Um, I also wanted to understand your strategies and your plans for the tier two cities and the tier three cities in terms of employment and education. If you can throw some light on that. Um, particularly, Sony, there's no a big city or a small city, hardly it matters now. Right. Particularly in the backdrop of COVID-19, I, I feel even a smallest village or a smallest town can emerge as the most happening place. So what we are trying to ensure and facilitate, we are not trying to discriminate any place for that matter. It doesn't matter, tier two, tier three, tier four. It can be the remote village. We are now facilitating the digital infrastructure by ensuring the connectivity to be the best across the state. In this direction, we have been working. Our honorable chief minister also has been taking a lot of interest. And as a department also, we have come out with the telecom policy to facilitate the have a single window policy to have any kind of issues with regard to the telecom and thereby ensuring the connectivity will be provided across the state and any of talent is there across the state now people have you know, gone back to their respective places now the talent is everywhere and right. they can do things from there wherever they live now so probably uh, covid will facilitate the growth in the now remote place the bigger cities will have a lot of challenges and not be the same uh, during the COVID, now post-COVID, during the COVID or post-COVID, the bigger cities have got many challenges but, uh, to make it a better place to do business. Anyhow, right, wherever right. they are, wherever they are, we want them to be most productive people and we need to facilitate in this direction. I just mentioned earlier the Beyond Bangalore is an excellent concept. And what I look forward is uh, the smaller cities, as you rightly pointed out, the smaller yeah. cities will become the most happening places. It's a great, uh, wonderful insights, and um, it's it's an honor to hear your vision uh, through CIO News, um, and it's a great vision. Um, thank you so much for joining in, and uh, uh, you know, coming on our platform of CIO News. It was an absolute pleasure to host you. So thank you once again, and you have a great evening. Thank you so much, Sony, for having hosting the interview.